Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packers, the podcast where you don't have to be Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. It's been a slow news week, Grassy. And today, <laughs> on a uh, Saturday of all days, it's not Tuesday. I know the intro is going to say Tuesday, but we didn't have enough money to edit it out. We bring back Packers QB legend recovering from the vid back in action, Mr. International, because it is mm. Twitter champion himself, Kurt Benkert. Look, man, I'm just, I think that's my biggest claim to fame right now, but thanks for having me on a Listen, Saturday. I got you. I, I got. I told you every time the intros just got to get more intense. Yeah, especially so we went, after this week. We have Mr. Worldwide. We went Pitbull status uh, on, on, on this interview. Okay. Cue the music. <laughs> done. Copyright. Mm. So, Kurt, first things first. Uh, how are you feeling? Because coming out, unfortunately, getting the COVIDs. Uh, yes. How are you right now, Saturday? How are you feeling? I feel really good. A little bit of, uh, could probably use a little more coffee, um, but I feel a lot better than I did a couple of days ago. A couple of days were rough, like two or three of the days, but I uh, feel pretty good for it only being like, six days since I tested positive the first time. And to go through that process, like you test positive and this is before like anyone, I mean, obviously you had the Arizona game in which like there was numerous players out. Right. Mm -hmm. And then like you test positive is it like the panic starting. It's like crap, 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 crap. Like now, like I'm going to miss football. Yeah. It was like, damn, like it wasn't, it really started to be crap, crap. When I saw that Aaron tested positive. Cause I'm like, yeah. you gotta be shitting me. Like, of all the weeks for me to go down, like that was kind of like I knew I could probably steal like a week or two on the 53 if Aaron got it when I didn't have it. And then I'm like, well, you know what? At this point, I can't control that. It is what it is. Um, at least, you know, be good for the playoffs. It won't have to run into this again. Um, but it was definitely like a little bit of a woe is me at first. And then I tried to hit the rebound button real quick and uh, attack it like anything else. Because you and I were having conversations and talking about that. And like, that was something like I was concerned, like how you were feeling. And then I was the, the timing of it, like, is, yeah. you know, you never want to lose any quarterback. But the timing yeah. of it, it was like, damn, like my dad even called me and was just like, is Kurt like good? Can he play? Like, can we see him on the 53? Yeah. And like, I, I was, I was rooting so hard. And I was yeah. just like, how you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? Just yeah. the, maybe we get those like two negative tests and we're able Dude. to rock and roll and play on Sunday. Yeah. Like, I, if, if it was like, like anything I could play on Sunday, but I'm, I don't have the negative test. So I'm sure this thing is going to string out my full like quarantine days. Yeah. Like if I had to play tomorrow, I'd be feel like I could play great. Maybe hit a nice little jog today or something. Um, I know I'm still supposed to like not be around people. So I might go outside for the first time. And the only thing I've done is I've gone uh, to get my COVID test in the car. So it's the only thing I've left for. Um, so I'm <laughs> looking forward to other, going outside. Other than that, it's Call of Duty Vanguard. And yeah, uh... <laughs> lots of that. And just, just ripping people on twitter that's about 360 it. no scopes and uh destroying the twitter trolls yeah, yeah. no I, I get it so during this process when you've been quarantined like how are mm -hmm. you still participating with the team is it like just call-ins is it kind of like you're on like a zoom session you know like to be yeah. there like how is that operating especially when like aaron Rodgers is also positive yeah. for it as well and like it's just jordan love like are you still yeah. like in the qb room um i'm not in the like i'm not like in the qb room or like any of the meetings and stuff but i follow like we have everything on our iPads that like we, if we really needed to, we wouldn't, we don't really need to go in the building. We could study everything on our iPads and like the coaches kind of guide us through everything the first time through. And then the, like you study on your own, but like I'm at the point where I don't necessarily need that unless there's a little nuance that can't be written down. Sure. Um, so I've just been following along like day to day. What I would normally do is if I was in the building um, on my iPad with our tip sheets and our installs and like, it's a really good day and age to have this because you don't miss a beat. Like you, I'll go in next week and it'll be yeah. like I didn't miss anything. That's what you're saying. Like in previous episodes, you were just like, listen, as long as I show up with like my iPad, I don't really yeah. need to show up with like clothes. Like we're good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. The only thing that you miss are like good jokes and and that's about it. Like and, and human interaction. But like your coaches are there to kind of talk through and uh, like especially in our room like it's so collaborative like to get ideas but once it's set in stone like it's in it's in the writing it's in the paperwork you know yeah. everybody knows what it is yeah and to we'll, we'll talk about this mm -hmm. momentarily so like right now because you you tested positive aaron tested positive mm -hmm. and i was like oh god i really hope jordan love just test positive because yeah. like that was like the main concern and like main fear yeah um and like a lot of talk has been about other things but some of the undercurrent of it has been about jordan love and his preparation and things yeah. like that and you know you've had 
the entire team kind of rallied around Jordan Love, mm-hmm. like on Instagram and showed him love and everything like that. Yeah. And it was really kind of like this awesome, like sentiment to see. And I think it just like spoke to how closely knit the, the like the locker room is. Yeah. Like, would you agree with that sentiment? Yeah, I mean, this team in general, like no matter if you're the most important guy, like the least important guy, like it is a team and like it's a brotherhood. And and we do think I feel like we do things differently here. Um, and everybody like nobody's going to like be upset or like hang their hat or whatever because Aaron's not playing. Like it's just, OK, Jordan's up. Like, let's go make sure he's ready. Like we're a good football team. We don't need just one player. Obviously, Aaron elevates us a shit ton. Sure. But like we're, it's also Jordan's first start. Like people are like it's an, an important moment for him in his career, too. Um, and people aren't going to let that go by and, and just pass us by. So I think this is a really special team to be a part of. And that's I expected nothing but that from them. And from your interactions, like kind of with Jordan and like being mm-hmm. in the QB room, like with him, you know, yeah. like they've talked to Devonte and said, like, you know, over this past week, like he's looked really good and kind of mm-hmm. like showing like why he was drafted in the first round, what have mm-hmm. you. Can you speak anything to like kind of like Jordan's like mindset? Everything that we hear is like that kind yeah. of like quiet leadership role. Um, yeah. you know, is it just like massive amounts of like preparation? And then like when he's in there, it's like, that's, you know, the yeah. speak softly, carry a big stick kind of mentality. Yeah, I would say so. Um, he's somebody that like, there are guys that maybe you need to like pull along and guys that you don't need to. He's a guy that like, you know, he's just going to show up. He's going to be prepared. He's got all of his work done. Like he goes about his business quietly and he's always ready to play. Like, but that's, that's like your job as a backup quarterback. And he's always going to prepare like that, whether he's starting or not. I doubt his preparation changed much this week. Um, sure. To be honest, just he's always ready, always ready to go and, and being prepared. Yeah, it's just playing with the ones like that's yeah. like that's the, yeah, literally that's the big thing. Exactly. And to, to circle back super quick and talking about like that Arizona win, because we haven't talked to you kind mm-hmm. of like, dude, like, can you walk me through like how insane like that game was for My you? God. Obviously being there, you know, kind of having like the world against you and being like, oh, this is the last undefeated yeah. team in football, short week on the road, what have you. And like you somehow come away with the dub. Man, that uh, that last like what four minutes of the game where we thought we scored, we didn't score. They went down like it was just wild, man. We've been in so many of those this year, and I think like that's those are the games that like uh, when you're a bad team, you're like, oh, we're gonna find a way to lose this. Where you're a good sure. team, it's like, oh, they just got another first down, we're gonna find a way. Like, yeah, I oh, got they got down to the seven yard line. Oh shit, we're gonna find a way. Like, and it's just that's just kind of who we are. Like, it's not pretty. We don't have everybody back right now. Like, yeah, that's been our team the entire year injuries and battling through, but like, we've just found a way. And I like, you could, I feel like you could throw that slogan on a t-shirt and that's just who we are. Like we sure. just, we find a way to win games every week. It looks different. Um, some teams we run more against some teams we pass more against Yeah. some teams. We give up a shit ton of yards and no points. Uh, some yep. teams we limit possessions. Like it just, you don't know what it's going to look like, but Every week, we're going to just find a way. And I I think that that's something that stands out about this particular squad. It's like the resiliency. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you started off this season in controversy. Yeah. Right? Like, literally, because the entire summer was like, is Aaron Rodgers coming back? And, like, it was a complete media storm, right? And so, like, right from the get, and then every game, like, you go in the first week, you get blown out. Like, it's it's a terrible game. And now you're on a seven-game winning streak, right? And the way that you've won those are last-second field goals, overtime you know game ending interceptions like all of these different ways that you're coming out to win and i think that that's one of the most admirable things about this team right now is just like they're showing like any way like we could win any way the defense like you know shows the hell up or the Mm -hmm. offense aaron Rodgers balls out or aaron jones or aj Dillon have a great game Mm -hmm. like it's just so many different ways the team can beat you and it's that resiliency and like battle tested mentality yeah, it's, it's been so much fun to be a part of. And, like, obviously your your anxiety and all that stuff would feel a little better with a few blowouts here and there. But this is uh, this is going to be a season we're going to look back and, and be like, damn, that game too? Yeah, that one that one showed up like that. It's Games get lost in blowouts. Like, you just yes. – uh, like, I forgot about it. Threw for a shit ton of yards, had a bunch of touchdowns. Like, cool game. But, like, the games I remember from college were the really close games where there was adversity and we had to fight back. And, like, yeah. even, like, close losses where, like, I showed – like we showed as a team, like just like guts and like, I don't know, those ones you remember more than the blowout wins against teams that weren't ready to play you. Um, yeah. And I don't know, it's, it's making it for a more of a special year. And then, you know, when you get to the playoffs, like the likelihood of having a blowout is not very high. Um, yeah. So you feel comfortable in those uncomfortable situations more often than your opponent. And as we've talked about it numerous times, like this, like there's people still out, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's so many people still out and Hell key yeah. players, like yeah. those players come back, like yeah. 
you know, we're we're doing this. We're yep. we're beating the last undefeated team in football without our top three wide receivers, right? Like yep. we're doing all these things without our left tackle, without our all pro CB, without Zadarius, like with all these mm-hmm. things, you know, and still finding a way to win. Yeah, I mean, like that's how you build a team, right? Yeah. Like you know, you can you assemble a whole bunch of players together and you put them in the locker room and you go through the plans mm-hmm. and you do all that stuff. But like the, that game time helps in terms of like forging those bonds and being like, hey, like I got your back, like let's go win this football game. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's ever done this before, but it would be really cool to see like when to like like team versus team, who was available for that game and their salary, and Ooh. to see how much our team cost that game versus how much they had in money on the field and yeah. were we able to pull it off and by how much like oh that'd be a cool like a like a cool metric of how saw that how too. much financially your team was there um, yeah thursday there was there was millions of dollars <laughs> on the bench yeah yeah like, so, millions and millions of dollars and and that's just i don't know i think that'd be a fun little metric maybe maybe you can uh you can get that to be your thing or something I got it. I, I got for you. it. <laughs> so we'll do some math. We'll do yeah. math. That's your next way to go viral. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> because I'm not doing anything else right now. I mean, like we have, again, it's been a slow news week. We've had nothing to talk about. Crazy. Um, so I want to address that for like a hot a second there yeah. because um, obviously uh, Aaron tests positive for COVID on mm-hmm. Wednesday, um, and there's like this uproar that's going to occur because yeah. it comes out that he's unvaccinated. The entire team knew the entire league knew, you know, protocols are being followed except mm-hmm. for the press conferences. But as we've talked about, it's not happening in other teams anyway, neither here nor there. Yeah. Yesterday, Aaron Rodgers goes on the Pat McAfee show for over 45 minutes and kind of just spills out kind of his thoughts on why he's not vaccinated, not vaccinated NFL protocols, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And that sparked off another storm. Uh, in which it became vax versus anti-vax. It became talking about like who Aaron Rodgers is as an individual, what have you. Yeah. And that I felt so bad because as soon as that interview ended, I got the notification. It's like, oh, Matt LaFleur is doing a press conference. Yeah. And it was this guy's birthday this week. <laughs> Sorry, it was his birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, oh, coach. Man. Um, and there was there was attempts for Devontae. There was attempts uh, with Jordan. There was attempts yeah. with Coach where it was kind of like trying to get their take. Right yeah. on what Aaron had said, and basically, whether it was coach saying like, "I'm not gonna watch it," we're focused on like the Chiefs and the the, the game on Sunday, or you have like Devonte saying like, "That's his business," what have you. Yeah, just something like this, which involves a member of your team and something that is bigger than football, and at this point has like encompassed the entire like media. Yeah, right. Is this something that you think like? brings the locker room closer together because it's so insulated do you think that this is something that like people can try to like tear us apart and make us go after aaron or what have you and we're just going to remain like resilient kind of like where are you at in terms of what you've seen on this squad yeah i think uh for for us as a team like i think it will have zero effect on us like we're just going to show up go to work play football try to win games and move on like week to week um i think like this was just like a matter of time like for him to to let it all out. And I think he was like pretty, uh, I would say he was reserved even a little bit um, for some of the NFL protocol type stuff. And I think that amongst everything, there were just a few different like talking points that got blended together where like, if it was separated maybe a little bit more in different segments, people wouldn't have just thrown it all together. But um, I don't know. It was, I, I really enjoyed watching it and like, I enjoy like him explaining himself and like talking about things like that. So um, for me, it was like, Oh, like, other people get to see a little more like insight into how things are working and like maybe what we agreed to as a union and maybe what we didn't, sure. maybe, uh, maybe we showed up and it was just kind of, Hey, this is the way it's going to be. Didn't know this was agreed upon. I don't know. There are a lot of other things out there, um, that I'm sure will be circled back on at the end of the season. Um, as far as like NFL and protocols and stuff. Uh, but I, I think like maybe in tune of, I don't, know, I don't think it'll do anything for our team. Like we we're a good, good group like we work well together we obviously enjoy having each other around and and people support the hell out of Aaron like he's such a good teammate um he's a great leader and I think the main problem that I had with everything yesterday were people trying to tear him down for his character when he was just giving you his like opinion on stuff like sure like whether you like his argument or not whatever side you're on or if you're halfway in halfway out it doesn't really matter like I don't think you can start making up narrative and and tearing down someone's character and describing what type of teammate he is when like you're not even his teammate like like we all would pick him over any other person to be our leader like it's and that's just like i could like pretty proudly say that across the room 
Um, so that's my opinion on everything. Yeah. I mean, like at some point, and I know you and I had a conversation before this, but talking mm -hmm. about like mm -hmm. one, like the nuanced conversation and everything yeah. did like bleed together. Yeah. So because of that, there's no more nuance. Right. And, and I talked about this yesterday and talking about like, there was parts of things that, that Aaron Rodgers I, I agreed with. And like, I was like, Hey, like, this is a good point. Like when you're talking about sitting in the car for 40 minutes, mm -hmm. like, because you're unvaxxed and like waiting for your test, but someone who also can carry it goes right yeah. in. Like that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, right? There's no yep. consistency there. Mm -hmm. But if you look at, you know, in terms of things like I disagreed with him about at the end of the day, you know, this was his opinion, you yep. know, he could, you could support it. You could not support it. What have you, when you start, like you said, focusing on the team and going, well, this is how he is as a teammate, but you're not in the locker room. Yeah. That's when, yeah. Hmm, maybe there's I a mean, little fire. Yeah. Back. There, there are a lot of like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I said this before or during, but like, he's a person that like, he's only like, he'll be prepared for whatever argument he wants to get into. Like, he doesn't just like, he doesn't just pick random things that he wants to be like vocal about or whatever, but like he had to, he had, this was going to come up and he had to like be ready for it. But like, he just doesn't, uh, he's not a person that just makes decisions just because like, he wants to know like reasons behind it. And like, as I feel like anybody should, like, you shouldn't just blindly sign any contract um sure. like it's it's the same principle but um yeah this uh i was kind of like i don't know i hope that from this though it sparks other conversations that are actually productive um like from people that are on both sides of the argument and in general like i think the biggest one of the biggest points that i appreciated that he brought up was like the the focus on health um and like diet and like those types of things i think aren't like talked about enough um as I don't know, and just in general in life, there there are other arguments that get brushed under the rug, just COVID v like vax v non vax. Like I'm sure. vaccinated, like it was pretty much a job requirement. Like it was I was gonna get vaccinated, I had to. Um if I didn't play football, like the life that I live, I don't do anything. Like don't know if I would have gotten vaccinated to be completely honest. Like yeah, it's I don't I mean I'm a, like I play video games, like I make content, like I'm at home <laughs> all the time, like I stick with my family and that's about it. Sure. Um didn't really I don't know, just there you have to remember there's a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life that have had a lot of different upbringings and different things that have, sure. they've been exposed to and just like i think just in general like broadening people's scope of acceptance and of different ways of doing things like it's not necessarily a bad thing like you would hope yeah. that as we get like more along as a society that we go down that route of like learning more and and being open to more conversations and i think like when it comes to like, if you're not harming other people, like yeah. it's your decision and like, cool. Like, yeah. right. Like that's the, and I think you're a hundred percent correct because yeah. the, the headline has become vax versus anti-vax. Yeah. Right. And, and Rogers can decide whatever he wants to put yeah. into his body, you know, what have you. Um, yeah. But then, like you said, like those other nuanced arguments or those other, you know, conversations get kind of just umbrella. Yeah. And all like, the, like all the NFL protocol stuff, like, like I, I tested on Monday, went into the building, got a phone call as I'm doing my work for the week. Hey, you tested positive. I got to come get you out of the room, give you a mask, and you have to walk through the building with a mask on. Get to your car and leave, but take two more tests. So I'm like, well, I've just been in here for 45 minutes doing work. Yeah. Thank God nobody else is in the room with me because I got there early as yeah. But you can probably cut the effort out. But, <laughs> um, but I'm just like, all right, man. Like I... The protocols, that's a whole nother argument, man. Sure. It's they I will tell you this. Um, there was a huge, huge time crunch leading up to the season where there were not a lot of answers. And it did feel like a lot of things were just thrown together and pieced together at the very end because there was a stalemate for a while. And we were concerned that we might not even get back into the building because there isn't there aren't answers to our questions. Sure. Um, and then next thing you know, the doors are opened and there's still not answers. But it's how the season started. It's just is what it well, is and that's the thing too like so some of the arguments have been about like the nflpa right in which like they're working with the nfl and like this mm -hmm. is what they agreed to what have yeah. you like do you as a player obviously like on the practice side, like but you pay dues like you you pay that mm -hmm. stuff like did you have a say in what those regulations were going to be or those protocols were going to be or was um, it kind of just like here <laughs> it was definitely like your reps had discussed and this is what it is it's 
like the NFLPA, like everybody shits on them. They do a lot of good things. Something like that. It's like any business. Nothing's perfect. Like sure. they do a lot of good things. I work with them on other projects. The people that I work with are awesome. I know there are other people that are responsible for other things and I have questions about. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe that could be done better. Like anything. Yeah. But I will say like showed up. Hey, this is how it's going to go. This is what has been agreed upon. Don't know when it was agreed upon. Like it just is what it is. Gotcha. And I mean, I'm in my position. Like I'm not one. I'm not a starter. I'm not a second string guy. I'm not on the 53. I'm not vested yet. I need three games to get my pension. Um, so this this COVID thing, like in my mind, I was like, shit. Well, there's two guarantee, yeah. almost almost two guaranteed games that like, all right, it is what it is. Um, but there's just a guy in my position. I'm just showing up to work. I'm trying to make the team like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, listen, buddy, (laughs) no one is ever going to look back at this season and be like, not a lot happened. (laughs) There was no twists or turns. And it's just been, it's been wild. And I think that everyone really just wants to kind of turn the page at this point. I know Mm -hmm. from what, who, what we've heard from the team, it's like, can we please talk about like football on Sunday? Yeah. Like, you know, you want to ask me questions about that. Then like, let's talk about that. Yeah. And I think you're also from a unique perspective because you knew like yeah. everyone in the building knew this is the reaction to the public finding out yeah. and like parts of the media finding out. And it I seemed like also, it was all stirred up of like an expectation that he was because yes. of the immunized comment. But I'm just in, in my humblest of opinion, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at this and I'm like, you guys are idiots, like for not knowing or not asking the question. That's why I know when Aaron said like, uh, well, I was ready for a follow up question. Nobody asked it. In my opinion, I'm like, if some, I don't know, if if somebody says they're immunized, I would have literally asked like, all right, what do you mean by that? Because that was also around the time of like, do I need to get a booster or a shot if I've already had it and have antibodies? Like that was the that was the the like what was going on then. It was a big question among players with the NFLPA. If I've already had COVID and I have antibodies and I can prove it, do I have to get the vaccine because I have antibodies? And they're like, well, well, yeah, you do. And so when he said he's been immunized, I thought that was going to be the question. Like, I thought so. So I was like, yeah, wow, nobody asked it. Got out of this one for a while. Like, yeah. And I think like the and the, the word that I kept throwing around yesterday was just like unnecessary in which like if it was tackled in that press conference, like we're done. We're not having this conversation in November. Like we're not talking about this whatsoever. It probably would have popped up a little bit again if Aaron came down positive COVID because I'd been like, ah, this is why. So they fly in Blake Bortles. Uh, The boat. The boat's coming back. The boat, baby. I love that guy. He's awesome. I imagine he's just like sitting at home, just like waiting. Like he's waiting for the bat signal in the sky and he's like. It's just a, it's just a boat. (laughs) It's just a boat. Yeah, dude, he's awesome. (laughs) I'm like, I'm really upset that he's here right now and I'm not there. Like, yeah. He's a fun dude to be around. He's a fun dude to be around. <laughs> um, so you, you, they fly in, they fly in Bortles. Um, the earliest that you can get out. So you need those two negative tests to be able to return yeah. to the team. So we would assume sometime next week. Yeah, I think I think the very latest is Thursday. So okay. I'm like, should be chilling. Okay, so you can come back on Thursday. Um, and then it's a matter of like, hey, you know, is Aaron going to be back? You know, because the earliest that he can come back is the day before the Seahawks game. Like that could potentially yeah. give you an opportunity. Yeah right to be elevated to the 53 and sit behind yeah. Jordan kind of yeah. like I'm, I'm not even gonna lie like I'm I hope Aaron's back in time for the game like as like yeah. for our team like that's I'm not like a selfish guy like yeah I'll make more money but like I hope Aaron's back for like before then and and things just kind of get back to normal but if I'm elevated like that's awesome get one game closer getting my pension get to be on the field dressed out um ready to go like one play away it's like that's what I do this shit for it's not just to to tweet and and to watch from the sideline, but um, definitely would be taking advantage of it one way or the other. And you bring up tweeting mm. um, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. last night, um, uh, Packers fans uh, favorite, and that is sarcasm uh, commentator. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Florio over here. I learned all uh, about him. Yeah. Coming out and uh, saying <clears throat> some made up BS and uh, talking about, you know, Aaron's character in regards to a backup quarterback and what have you. Can you, Kurt, can you kind of set the scene for people who don't know what we're talking about and uh, kind of how you're uh, responded? Yeah. So 
I don't know who this ass hat was on Twitter. Never heard of him. Like, I don't even know. He's got like some fuzzy ass blurry logo as his Twitter profile picture. And I see that he writes an article that has just complete like BS in it. No facts. Basically saying how Aaron, it would be like Aaron to tell the team that they don't need a third quarterback because it'd be a wasted spot. Um, some, some shit like that. And I just basically told him how he's a shit journalist and how you shouldn't put words in other people's mouth and just that he's a clown for it. Um, mainly like why that struck me. Like I, I see a lot of shit that I want to respond to that I don't like, I just move along, keep on my business. But like, I really can't stand people spreading a narrative that is false, especially when it has to do with someone who to me has treated me so well compared to what I even thought like he would have being the person I am, the person that he is like Aaron has been so awesome to me since I got here. And even with like the turmoil and all the stuff, like from the off season, like dude welcomed me in with open arms from day one and has shown me nothing but love. So for someone to sh- like spread a narrative that directly related me to him, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I was not cool with that. Um, Aaron can fight his own battles and all that other shit, but if you're going to bring me into it and then also talk about his character and how he treats people like, Aaron genuinely cares about people and he cares about getting to know you and your family. And like, that's just bullshit. So if you're a journalist, like I would like highly suggest you one, have facts, right? Two, like don't build narratives that are just based on, yeah. Like what is like, what are you even doing just to get a few more clicks on your busted website? Oh, but, <laughs> oh, but I mean, he kind of admitted that like he, I saw, uh, and I don't want to give him any press cause I don't care about him, yeah. but like, cause a guy in a, his basement is doing a much better job than what he's doing. That's- so, but in terms of, yeah, he like came out, there was a headline literally that he put out. It says like, if Jordan love was unvaccinated, he would have been out too, but he's not like, like that, like, <laughs> like who, it's like, just like, it's yeah. a made up hypothetical like yeah, that. Like, we're we're going to get upset about hypotheticals now. Okay. It's, yeah. It's man. I, uh, I, pro- I, I probably let him have it a little bit too much because it was such a good jab at him that it got even more like interaction to his shit. So I yeah. might even send him an invoice for uh, a <laughs> cut of his week's sponsorships or whatever the hell he has. Because, um, yeah, it was, I don't know, man. I just, I don't like lying. I don't like, like, I just don't like that shit. And yeah. especially when it comes to people's character, like you can, you can diss somebody all you want and disagree for opinions on other matters, but like, don't come at somebody's character when they're a really good person and treat someone well and say that they do the exact opposite. Like, what are you even doing? You don't even know the dude. Like, And I, I think it, it like, it's hard to kind of like explain it, but you and I have talked about this a little bit before. Mm-hmm. Like there is a divide, whether it's a wall or whatever, there's a divide between the locker room and the outside world. Yeah. And I think that fans, journalists, you know, et cetera, they want to tap into that. I mean, that's what beat reporters are supposed to be, yeah. right? Like they have sources, they talk to players, what have you. But unless you're in that locker room, like maybe you don't catch those nuances. Like yeah. maybe you don't catch like the vibe of the room or like yeah. how you communicate with each other or how you talk with one another. And because yeah. of that, that leads to speculation because of the unknown. Yeah. Or someone says a sentence and you're like, oh, well, here we go. You know, yep. I, I think that that's incredibly frustrating. And I think yep. it could be frustrating for fans and maybe even media. I'm not speaking for media, yeah. but like could be fans because like we want to know, like we want to yeah. be in, like in the know and yeah. all that great stuff. But at the end of the day, the only people who know what's going on in that locker room are the people within yes. it. Where like LaFleur says this a lot, where communication lacks, negativity fills the void. And that is Ooh. something that I feel like in media, especially, what are you going to get more clicks out of negativity filling the void or positivity filling the void so when you have these people that just keep anytime there's a speculation you keep just jabbing at that negativity then eventually that's all that people are going to see and that's what they're going to expect and associate with this person sure. and i don't know I'm, I'm filling that void with a little bit of a different uh <laughs> a little bit of a different juice than this this other clown was uh just to yeah. let him know like that's any if you bring me into anything that i feel is worth like saying something about like you're not going to get away with it no, it's just not going to happen. Like, again, the, you're choosing the battles. That's yeah, that's, that is, uh, if anything, I will never lose a fight on Twitter or on anything, any argument, because I very specifically choose what I get myself involved in. And yeah. I feel like that's maybe how some people should go about their business. A little more. There you go. But gets clicks, I guess. So it's, it drives the world, my friend. Yep. It, uh, <clears throat> it drives the world. Um, but Kurt, 
uh, I appreciate you taking the time coming yeah. on a Saturday. We're getting this out after all the craziness that yes. has been this week. Uh, most important thing is I hope you're well soon. I'll Thank be you. back in action soon. I hope the family's safe, healthy, all that great stuff. And uh, we'll we'll have you back real soon awesome. and we'll uh, get we'll rock talk, and rolling. We'll talk football next week. Yeah, we'll talk actual football. <laughs> we'll talk football. We'll recap the game. I'm excited. I'm really excited to watch Jordan uh, play this week and some of the other guys I'm, that are going to get I'm a chance. Pumped. Like, obviously, uh, Kylan had a really tough injury, but I'm excited for a guy like Patrick Taylor to to maybe get some special teams play or something wherever he's yep. going to fit in the role. Um, I don't know. It's – there's always positives to negatives um, and you get to see yeah. new things and, and uh, that's it. That's it. Kurt, where can the people find you and all that you're doing? Cause I, I see the, the 360 no scopes. Oh yeah. You're, you're, you're just, you're knocking out the noobs. Like it's nothing. Yeah. I've been, uh, I've been playing a little bit of call of duty this week in my free time, uh, but I play, I stream on Twitch, Kurt Ben Kurt um, doing a lot of Fortnite right now for this NFL PA tournament that I'm trying to stay on top of. Um, and then Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all just my first and last name. Beautiful. Kurt, pleasure as always. Thank Folks, you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go back, go. Go back, go.